Hello everybody and welcome to our podcast today, Sunday the 9th of July, Trinity 5. We're still very early in the Trinity season, there's a long way to go. And I'll begin, as usual, with a reading. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Christ according to St Matthew. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of Christ. And so now we come to my thoughts on that reading. And the beginning of the reading reflects something we have probably all felt. To summarise, I can't do anything right. When John the Baptist fasted, the people said he was possessed by a demon. When Jesus came eating and drinking like everyone else, they said that he was a glutton and a drunkard. Jesus put it another way so the people would understand. When a happy tune was played, no one joined in. And when a sad tune was played, still no one joined in. Jesus must have been really frustrated that more people didn't follow him in spite of everything he said and the miracles he did. And so we come to the difficult part of the reading. What did Jesus mean when he said, I thank you, Father, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to in infants. You would think that it would be the other way around. Well, we have to look at the culture of the time to understand this. In Jesus' time, there was a long-held belief that to know God, you had to study for years, understand the most minute details of the Torah or the Jewish scripture, look for and explain points that were previously not understood, and then, finally, after many years, you would become wise and would come to know and understand God. Well, I'm not sure how much theology you have read, but they can read, but theologians can really twist themselves up to put things in an extremely complex way. So complex, it's difficult to know what they are saying, and when you finally get it, it could have been said in a couple of sentences and not a whole chapter that gives you a headache when you try to get your head around it. Now, some of what they say is important, and it does in indeed give us a new insight into God. But some of it is so obvious that a child could grasp it. So obvious that sometimes I thought I'd got it wrong, that it couldn't be that simple. Just like the scholars of Jesus' time, they made the simplest things complicated. And what Jesus was trying to tell them was simple. You don't have to be well educated to know God. You just have to look at him and believe that he is the son of God. Seems pretty obvious. Well, to the people of the time, it was totally alien to believe that anyone could know God through such a simple means. It was completely outside their view of the world and their view of the way things are to think that anyone could know God. 
including those who could not be educated, such as the poor women and children. It's a demonstration of just how revolutionary Jesus was. Not only is he turning hundreds of years of cultural belief on his head, but he was including women and children in something that, up until then, was the sole preserve of rich men. No wonder they wanted to get rid of him. But as well as overturning the social order of the day, Jesus was offering hope. He said in that famous part of the Bible, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And this is a message of hope for all those who were poor or oppressed in his day. For the women who were the possessions of, of the men and often badly treated. For the poor who'd never been given away to know God before. To children who were considered as worthless. And the slaves who were badly treated and sometimes could be literally worked to death. Here was a message of hope to help them to carry their burdens. They were able to know God, find hope and rest as long as they believed in Jesus. So what does this mean for us today? We know that the way to God is through Jesus, and we know that we do not have to be great theologians to understand what Jesus is offering us. We have the Bible to read and to help us understand. So in a way, we're lucky. We know that our faith will bring us to God when our time has come. However, it is sad to think there are so many millions in our society, let alone the world, who do not know this. They do not know the comfort that faith can bring, the joy that faith can bring, or the, or the utter relief that when we can do no more, we can hand everything over to God and let him take care of it. But we can also spread our faith in what we do. In the reading, Jesus says, Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds, and we can show our wisdom by our deeds. We need to remember that Jesus included everyone in his message, and that one of the accusations against him was that he is associated with sinners, tax collectors, beggars, and outcasts. Well, we have many outcasts in our society including the homeless and those in prison. And perhaps one of the things we should be doing is praying for those people as well as giving to charities that support them. People may not know why we're doing it, but we know that we're doing it in God's name, that he is with us wherever we go, and that while some of our charity work may be hard at times, even making a dinner for a neighbour can be awkward on occasion, he is with us to lighten our burden and give us rest. Amen. And so we come to our questions for this week. Have you ever, ever had the feeling that you can't do anything right? Number two. Who do you think are the outcasts in society today? Number three, do you give up time or money to support a good cause? Number four, do you pray for the people that you support? And so let us pray. We give you thanks, Lord, that we can lay our burdens at your feet and that following you brings us so much benefit and joy. And we pray, Lord, for those millions in the world who do not know you and do not know that they can come to you when they are tired and weary. And we pray that you turn their hearts, Lord, enter their hearts and their minds, that they may know that you are always with them and the relief that just handing things over to you can bring. Amen. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to our song for this week. And for this week I've chosen, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Bye, everybody. Take care of yourselves until I come speak to you again. Bye.